Write your own path with opportunities. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Opportunities Extra. And today I have some fabulous extra. We have Ginia DeLima, and hopefully I pronounced that right, yeah. with the Writing and Editing Podcast, which is kind of if you're looking for a more holistic uh, way to look at writing and editing in general, this is the podcast you want to find. So I'm going to let Ginia introduce herself and tell us the one thing she wishes every writer knew. That your characters should have not just a goal, but also a motivation for that goal. Because as an editor, I often will open a manuscript. One of the first things that jumps out is that the character wants something, but we don't know why. And it's very hard to become engaged with that character and understand their reasoning and their actions and their feelings if we don't have the why behind it. Oh, I really like that. So so kind of like if a, a character is coming in and they're salivating and you don't know what they're salivating for, it makes a big yeah. difference if it's for a cadaver or a cake. So oh, it's good yeah. to kind of have that. I mean, those might be very different genres as well. <laughs> that is true. Uh, I do write horror. I should. <laughs> that's, that's why my brain automatically goes to cadaver. That's only but, fair. Tell me a little bit about how you got started with your podcast, which is a great podcast, by the way. And I have subscribed on Spotify. And I suggest you, those of you listening, many of you are on Spotify. Go find this. Thanks so much. I started as a guest. And over time, I ended up being asked to come back and do something called Editing Essentials, which is sort of like a podcast within a podcast. So a little bit of a Hamlet influence going on there. And so originally I just did that and we would cover very basic editing questions that authors might want to know, such as how do I determine what type of editing I need? Where does the human part of this come in? What should I know about my, uh, my editor, not just for what they can provide for me, but them as a person and how that might influence our relationship. And then after a while, my co-host decided he was ready to retire from the podcast and he offered me the chance to host it on my own and take over. So I did. And there was a bit of a learning curve because I'm not the most tech savvy person. I'm one of those people who called a help desk once about my printer only to find out I hadn't plugged it in. I hope that gives you any idea. <laughs> but thankfully, so the internet is just filled with advice and people who are willing to help you. And actually, one of the authors that I edit for was extremely kind and met me over Zoom and walked me through how to set some of these things up. Oh, that's awesome. Well, and that's kind of brings me to a point that I, I really try to hammer home is that it all ships rise with the tide where we're all giving and cooperating. And that is the best way. You know, everybody talks about marketing, mm -hmm. you know, and it's so hard. But to, to me, I always think it's building relationships and we all do that. So let's just build relationships with each other by being helpful and good citizens. Right. So, and I think you can tell when it's genuine too versus it's just I'm trying to get something out of this or I want to leapfrog from you into someone that you know in your network who I think is quote unquote bigger and better than you and I'm just using you as that middleman stepping stone. We generally know when that happens. We can understand what that person's motives are for connecting with us. So yeah, I think that's an important part of it too that you are yeah. using the word connection and not networking. Yeah, yeah, because it is it is about building relationships one at a time. So I, I kind of want to go back a little bit to what you, when you were talking about the different kinds of editing. I just mm -hmm. had a conversation today yeah. with somebody who is very as a professional. They you know not a new writer, um, and I was explain I was having to explain the different kinds of editing, and I was really surprised. Um, do you want to talk about that a little bit, like developmental versus sure. say copy editing? Right. Which are very different. <laughs> yes, they are. And I have noticed even within a lot of the writing groups, for instance, online, people will say copy editing or even advertisements that come through. They don't mean copy editing. They usually mean they want developmental editing. So developmental editing is what I mostly do. And that's where we look at all those big picture pieces. So I am going to be looking at your characters, your character arcs. Do the characters stay consistent throughout? And if they don't stay consistent, is there a good reason why? Because it also can't have too much coincidence because we know that coincidence is put in by the author probably because they encountered a problem they didn't know how else to solve it. 
But I'm also going to be looking at things like plot, pacing, the flow, and some of this overlaps with line editing, which I also do. And line editing is just what it sounds like. It's that line by line level. I'm going to be making sure the idioms are used correctly, that dialogue sounds natural, that there's variance in the dialogue, for instance, and just also that you're wording in general the sentences that they don't sound clunky or awkward. And then there's copy editing, which is mostly just mechanics. So it is going to be looking for things like, did you put a comma where the comma should go? Is your verb tense correct? Is it, again, also consistent? You're not hopping between verb tenses throughout a paragraph, that sort of thing. Yeah, that's awesome. So now that you know, don't don't talk about it like that before. Everybody has been educated. There's no more excuses. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about uh, where you got started as as a writer, editor before the podcast. Like about your personal history. Going back, way way back, I originally in high school really wanted to pursue something with literature. But at the time, it was one of those jobs where people said, oh, you won't make any money. You won't have a way to survive if you go that route. So I just did it as more of a hobby. I was on the school newspaper. I wrote. I edited for it as well. I had articles that won at the state level. I had poetry published by the time I was 16. I wrote a lot just in my free time. And then I went to college, and some of it just kind of drifted away. But I was mostly into the academic world and everything that came with it. So then I was still doing a lot of writing and editing, but it shifted gears. So now I'm writing for peer reviewed journal articles and I'm editing the same thing. Or I was writing in-house documentation for national nonprofits, which was as exciting as it sounds. <laughs> but again, it was one of those things too. And I can't call it a midlife crisis because I was only 26, but I had one of those moments where I just thought, I don't really feel fulfilled with what I'm doing. And so I started pursuing opportunities that were also adjacent to writing and editing. So as an example, since my master's is in applied developmental psychology, I read a few hundred books and wrote the questions for the accelerated reader test that they give out for children. And so I did that just as a little side thing for a while people started giving me their work and it started off with a lot of college essays from students, for instance. Can you edit my paper for me? Can you help me through this? And then that turned into people who were doing creative writing. And then from there I became, I don't wanna say a professional beta reader, but pretty much that's what I did for a couple of years. And then I was given a position or offered a position by a small press. And then after that, I just kind of went from there. That's awesome. Thank what you. Did you good path to do that too. a very solid you know what I mean very methodical and purposeful path even though in the beginning I will say it's it's it is one of my gripes when people are like well you can't make money in that so don't don't do it I've heard that so many times I was told that um yeah. and I've been a professional writer my entire life it was nonfiction, but hey writing is writing exactly uh, so, yeah that really bothers me that that is such a, a message that we which kind of becomes self for self fulfilling then. Exactly, and I completely agree with you. We're setting people up with this belief that you can't sustain your livelihood by doing something that you enjoy. So then, what's the trade off? Are you going to have a comfortable lifestyle but be miserable and dread eight hours of every single day? That doesn't really sound that appealing to me. Yeah, and yet it's so common. <laughs> right. And then we also almost have these judgments where we're placing certain professions on a different level than others. Instead of viewing them as contributing equally to society, because also think too, like how much enjoyment are you giving people with your writing? How many people are you touching with that versus let's say an internal report that I generated? I'm not saying it wasn't helpful, but I'm saying I also don't think that we should say one is more valuable than the other. Exactly. There's room for all types of art and creativity, um, both of those which are creative. Uh -huh. You know, that's the other uh, misnomer I think that we get is that nonfiction is not creative at all. It's just as creative. Oh, you know? yeah. So. And with editing a lot of memoirs, I can definitely agree with that because in some cases it can almost be harder because you're trying to condense your life into 80,000 words. And how do you do that? Yeah. Yeah. And especially when it's the truth and the truth is dark and, you know, you have to deal with it. 
Well, you have a wide variety of experience in, in the writing world from all sorts of angles. So you, we, we did get to the best practice, you know, the, the thing that you wish writers knew, but what are some of the other things that you wish writers knew? Because I'm sure you have a laundry list. Yes, if we're going to look at a copy editing level, the number one would probably be formatting your dialogue tags correctly and knowing what is a dialogue tag versus an action beat. I have seen it so many times that I wrote a blog post about it, one of the very few I've written. If we're looking <laughs> if we're looking at a line by line level edit, I really look for variance in character voices because that's something that I see quite a few authors skip over and not just the authors that I work with, but even when I'm reading where everyone sounds the same. And so I was interviewed once by a screenwriter. He worked on, I think, Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad. And he was saying that when they're sitting around in the writer's room, they have to black out the names and people have to be able to pick up who is speaking without being able to see the names. And I feel like that's something that we should also bring over to fictional writing. And so when we're picking up a book, it should be that same thing. I shouldn't have to go back and look over and see, wait, whose POV are we in again? Who is it speaking? Even when we see the lines on the page bouncing back and forth from character to character, there should be something there that tells us who it is. Yeah, I love that idea. I'm, I'm going to try that because <laughs> you're right. It should be they just by their actions and their tone, you should know who's speaking, not necessarily comma, she said, you know. Right. Yeah, That's just awesome. their, their word choice, their sentence mm -hmm. structures. Is someone maybe a little more blunt? What kinds of words they use? Mm -hmm. And then if we want to take that and apply that to a developmental level of editing, but bringing it over to a line level of editing, think about your character's background and who they are, because that's going to be filtered through our speech. We see that even with the people we know in our real lives, that the way they phrase things, the way that they talk to someone versus let's even say the way they talk to their child versus the way they talk to their neighbor or coworker, but we're still going to always know it is them. That speech mm -hmm. is still identifiable as theirs. And that's something that we should see translated on the page as well. Yeah, I like that you also point out that we speak differently to different people. We all have our polite work speech. We have our hanging out with the friends with a beer speech. So it's all, but, but it is always the same person, same, said, uh, same mannerisms. And since you are a horror author, just when we think of this, even something that we see a lot with true crime and they're able to pick out maybe this person is a, a suspect when they're looking at the letters that are received, the threats, and they're able to say, hey, John always spelled this word wrong and the person writing his letter also spells this word wrong consistently or John always phrases it like this and so does this guy in the letter. So it's just, there's a real life example of how yeah. it works out, but yes. That's awesome. Yeah, that's so there's your your very good advice, best practices, you know, about editing, you know, and you have some really good ideas for best practices. I love the blacking the names out, though. That's fantastic. Then test yourself, mm -hmm. you know. So how can we, the listeners and the authors listening to this, support you and your podcast and you just in general? What can we do to help? I would love it if they went to go to wherever their favorite listening platform is and listen to an episode or two, and then leave a rating or review. Buzzsprout also has the option on my Buzzsprout website to leave fan mail. So you can send me a message if maybe there's something you'd like to see on the podcast or you have someone you'd like to recommend, even just general feedback, go ahead and send me a message there. That's awesome. Yeah, and you can find those links in the description, but yeah, definitely go do this thing. These we we love our our podcasts and we love the people that support us as writers. But if we don't give back that support, then it's really hard to keep going. So I think, I think it's a very important thing to do. I agree. Well, how about what's coming up for you next? Like what are you, what's going on in the near future? Do you have any special plans that you can talk about? Yes. So I will be attending a few events this year. I've already started planning events into 2025 where I go to support some of the authors that I work with. I will be at Bright Reads in Maryland leading a panel on vampires and why we find them so delectable, but also why they find us so delectable. And I will also be at Getting Witchy With It in Salem, Massachusetts. 
And then oh. looking farther out, I'll be at Imaginarium in June in DC. Oh, I'm so jealous. I, I really want to attend all of those. <laughs> So, well, how, how, I know we just talked about your links. Can you spell it out for the people who will not be able to see the links at the bottom of this? It doesn't always translate. Where is the best place for us to connect with you? Probably my website, which is jenniaedits.com. And it's just my name, J-E-N-N-I-A-E-D-I-T-S.com. And I have links to my social media accounts there and also links to the podcast website. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you heard it here. Go ahead and go support Dinia de Lima. Go listen to writing and editing podcasts. If you want a nice holistic, full 360 view of editing and writing, um, she has a lot of great information and a lot of great experience, as you just heard. And that is my little bit of extra for this week. Thank you, everyone, for listening in on whatever platform you're listening from. If you enjoyed this, please give me a like and a follow. For authors that need more submitting and less searching, get both with Authortunities, a weekly calendar of author opportunities organized by date and emoji at authortunities.substack.com. And I will talk to you next week. Grab some paper, grab your pen, open Authortunities, and you can begin. When you exercise your rights and get published, you may change. Write your own path. Both wonderful and strange with opportunities With opportunities Opportunities